Welcome to Podcast in Progress. I'm your host, Charlie Deist, here to save you time, money, and precious effort getting your voice to stand out from all the noise. All right, in preparing for this, I think I signed up for about five different free trials for different podcasting AI services, and I'm going to have a terrible hangover in about a week when all of a sudden the free trials end and I'm getting billed for things. So you'll have to remind me to make sure I cancel those free trials that we're not going to use. But I think it sort of speaks to this time that we're in where everyone and their mother has a podcast these days, and it's Mm -hmm. easier than ever. Uh, The flip side of that is that we need to stand out in a much more crowded field. And then there's this other question of just with AI tools, how do you stay on top of a field that's evolving as quickly right. as it is? So yeah. the first question, David, is uh, is AI going to take our jobs? I don't see it as, as strictly as taking our job. I think it, it will take our job currently, but give us new jobs, if that makes sense. It's a trade-off. Right. I mean, I think it could, you can take this back to the Luddites in 17th century England, they were afraid that the mechanical loom would take everyone's job and we'd all be replaced by the robot singularity or something. Uh, (laughs) And that didn't in fact happen, at least uh, it didn't happen right away. And still, I think that the potential for AI is, is much more along the lines of freeing up our time so that we can do things that are more meaningful to us as human beings. And uh, this podcast is sort of a a podcast about podcasting with the help of AI, but we're going to review some tools that will hopefully give people uh, a sense of how they can use AI, not hype behind it, but really just seeing what are the couple of things that we can do, keeping it simple, cutting through the weeds. How many times uh, have I started some podcast project, but just found that it was too much of a headache to go through the whole rigmarole of editing it and producing the show notes. Uh, transcription is a whole nother game. If, you, if you're committing to typing out a, a whole transcript for an episode, you won't have any time left over for the, the joyful things of life. So basically, we're going to run down. These are the six tools that I've found are changing the podcasting game when it comes to AI. You ready to go? Let's get into it. All right. So the first one is this auto transcription Uh, And you see it with things like Otter or Rev.com. Rev was offering and still offers, I think, human transcription where you can actually pay around $1.25 a minute to have someone listening and typing to make sure that they're getting it 100% accurate. And that's beautiful if you've got the budget for that. But if you're transcribing hundreds or even thousands of minutes of transcripts, as I've done in the past, uh, one project involved... Uh, over 100 hours of audio, wow. and that had to be distilled. So we used otter.ai for that because I had about a 5,000-minute budget and still didn't even hit that budget with uh, with those 100 hours. So if you have a lot of material, you don't want to be paying per minute. Find one like Otter or Rev Max, which has a plan that you can upload up to the amount that you need. And I think, you know, you should use these liberally. Don't feel like you need to conserve AI power. There's plenty of AI power to go around. Uh, the, the strength of these services is obviously that they save time and give you a pretty good rough draft. Uh, the downside is that, of course, it's not as good as a human being. Sometimes the AI will get a word wrong. Sometimes even quite comically, you get these transcription errors that, uh, you know, you couldn't make this stuff up. But in general, it's pretty good as a first approximation. Is that your experience? Yeah, it's it's it almost feels like magic, honestly, to me. I am not super into the transcription world, but seeing how well it, it can pick things up, even with through accents and even with noise in the background, it, it's, it's phenomenal. And it's gotten a lot better. I know when I first started doing this, it was pretty rough, pretty clunky. Had a hard time yeah. telling where one sentence started and another sentence you know, ended. But now it's, it's gotten a lot better and, and continues to get better. And I think what's coming next in this space is actually another layer where you'll be able to instruct it in advance to take a little bit more liberties and rewrite things selectively right, to, yeah. to make it make more sense. Mm-hmm. But for now, we're left with the number two on our list, which is condensing your podcast or other audio into prose using these different prompts to improve writing. So you can do this through something like ChatGPT, where you basically feed it a paragraph of text and just tell it what you want to do, like, you know, write this in the style of uh, Ernest Hemingway. Or in our case, we just might want to tell it to condense this, but preserve the original meaning. And that works pretty well. Uh, if, 
if you're working on a much longer document, like an hour long transcript, you might not want to be copying and pasting in every time to chat GPT. So that's where these tools like Notion come into play. And Notion, for those who don't know, is a, an all-in-one workspace. We use it a lot to just stay organized and on top of our, our workflows for multiple podcasts where we have these dashboards and we're tracking which stage a particular guest is within our workflow. Uh, but Notion can also be used as like a word processing tool. And it's a little more versatile than what you might get with something like Google Docs. It's based on different blocks and you have the ability to create columns and toggles to be able to see, you know, and kind of work through a transcript uh, one paragraph at a time or even one sentence at a time. I'll show uh, an example of this here. So this was uh, a recording that I made earlier today, and maybe I'll even just kind of reproduce this. All right, so this is just me talking. And, you know, the thing is, when you're talking like this and you're spitballing ideas, trying to come up with sort of the, the core essence of what you want to say, there's a, a challenge, which is that your usual speech, the way you talk to other people, doesn't always sound the same as if you were writing it out in advance, writing an outline, and then sitting down and editing it after the fact. So uh, you're going to get a piece of text that's not nearly as clear, concise, if you're just going stream of consciousness, to what you would get if you had actually planned it out in advance and written it, right? Great. I saw how it was really trying to get core and court set up there, but it, it figured it out in the end. Yeah. So again, even like the, the, the I just use the, if you double tap the control button on your uh, Mac, right. usually that pulls up the, the little dictation thing. Mm -hmm. So that's even a shortcut over, uh, if you're just recording a monologue, you don't have to use something like Otter or Rev. You can just double tap there. Um, so now here we go. We've got this this ugly original, and I'm going to feed it a prompt. Uh, there's different ones you can pull up. There's the improved writing, the magic wand, which does a little bit more than just fixed spelling and grammar. Fixed spelling and grammar is going to leave your word choice intact. That's a benefit if you're really careful that you don't want to, say, change your guest's uh, intention or change some word that they might have chosen on purpose, improved writing can actually go a little too far. Uh, make shorter, make longer. That's if, you know, you don't care so much about the specific word choices. Um, for this one, I'm going to use this one, the, uh, the sparkly stars to simplify language. And let's see what we get here. Okay, so here's what I'm trying to say. When I speak without preparing or organizing my thoughts in advance, it can be challenging to express myself clearly. The way I talk casually to others isn't the same as if I had written out an outline and then edited it. Stream of consciousness speaking will result in a less concise message than if I had planned my thoughts in advance and written them down. I would say it's getting it much shorter, much more concise and clear, and it really preserved all of the meaning of this original. So I'm very happy with this. Uh, I could play around with it a little more and do some more manual editing. Okay, here's what I'm trying to say. You know, I can get rid of that. It doesn't really add that much. Uh, so this is the system that I use. I use a multiple column approach so that I can compare the original with the enhanced one. Uh, and sometimes I even use three columns where I do a, a one with, where I just fix the spelling and grammar and then another where I use improved writing or simplify. And then I pull a little bit from each one and just work my way down that way. And I have to say that I used to do this by hand without AI and it took me about three hours to get through an hour long interview. Now it takes me about an hour, so three times less, and the end product is better than what I was doing before. So wow. robots taking our jobs awesome. or force multiplier, <laughs> you be the judge. All right, let's move on to number three, and this gets a little more into your domain. We're gonna talk about sound repair and editors like Descript that sort of build themselves as the, the hot new thing in podcasting. How has your process changed since the advent of something like Descript. Yeah, yeah, totally. So I, I don't want to get too much into the weeds here, but there are tools that you can use in your audio workflow that automatically do things like clean up the sound. I've been using those for years and they do a pretty decent job. If you put too much on, it can sound uh, pretty bad, but overall they're, they're pretty nice to sit in the background. Recently, we've seen a change with Descript where they do this completely different technique that 
uses the voice that they have already uh, access to and they create an AI voice based off of that and use that to provide clean audio. So that kind of revolutionizes. That's the overdub feature? Yes. And I've been trying to reach out to them to see exactly if my, that's my theory, I should clarify. I'm trying to see if my theory is right, but it's kind of revolutionary in how it's created a new sound for clean audio in bad spaces. I think Adobe is doing a process similar to that too, but it's revolutionary. Yeah, so my experience with this script is that it's not only a user-friendly interface where they transcribe your audio, not quite as well as Otter or Rev in my experience, but they give you a pretty clean transcript that you can use to edit the actual audio file underneath. So unlike the script where you can just edit the text file, you're actually able to edit the, the MP3 or whatever that underlying file is just right. by highlighting and deleting they also have tools to delete gaps of a certain length. So you can just specify if there's silence of two seconds or more, cut that down to half a second. And uh, another tool is the remove filler words. So the ums and uhs and you knows. And if you repeat yourself, it's going to underline that and show you that that's prime material for the cutting room floor. And, and my experience with that is is a little bit mixed because you can use a feature to automatically just get rid of all the filler words. But if you listen through it, you're going to notice these little jumps, especially if it's video, you'll, you'll see the jump and then you'll sometimes hear it too, where it clips it not quite in the right space. Okay. So here's an example of a descript file that I was just working in and the speaker at times would sort of stutter a little bit or repeat a word. So I can see here where the audio wave form is, and then I can edit here. And if I highlight here, then it highlights down there. So you 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 still can't pay off. Uh, and the yeah, I'm going to try to cut off these first two and see what happens. And if I listen to this, it sounds like it's cutting off. And I can kind of see here, you learn over time that it cuts off a little too much. So this you was getting cut. Whereas if I extend it out a little bit, that sounds clear. So it requires a little bit more attention. Yes. The yeah. AI is not quite there yet to where it can clearly pick out the beginning and end of that filler word. So there's, again, human discretion coming into play. It's like the chess analogy of uh, the the AI right. beating the human, yep. but the human with the AI is more powerful than the AI alone. And I think that metaphor generally carries over from most of the work that we're doing with AI, where, sure, if you leave it all up to the AI, it's going to get done faster than if you were sitting there uh, in Audacity or some other editing software trying to manually pull these ums and uhs out. Exactly. But the combination of the AI with the human is the fastest of all. So just to summarize that, if you're using something like Descript, make sure that you're manually checking where it's eliminating the gaps. Uh, I find it does a little better when it's a long silence, but even if, you know, let's say you have a, a microphone where the gain is kind of low, sometimes it will detect a silence where the person was actually talking. There's also the studio sound filter in Descript that makes it sound like someone's in a really low noise studio, even if they're yes. just using a, a crappy microphone and they're outside at the park. And that one, what's the trade-off there, David? Depending on how bad the original audio quality is and uh, how strong of a filter you're applying to it, you can end up with a little bit of an inhumane robotic sound. But I think the sweet spot is if you record as well as you can, um, given your setup, your uh, built-in laptop microphone or whatever in a quiet room, um, it, it does not sound like you're in your, your bedroom or like your living room. It sounds like you're actually in a professional studio. It's, it's, it's phenomenal. So find the sweet spot of what you can do uh, in terms of quality for yourself while also applying the certain amount of filter strength. You have to play with it a little bit. Okay. Now, the next one is similar to the voice overdub feature. This is voice modification. And along with that, the whole minefield of deep fakes <laughs> and uh i know i've been fooled before by uh, mm -hmm. a deep fake where it's like well is this really uh you know thomas edison interviewing steve jobs about the, right. the light bulb no i haven't i haven't actually <laughs> seen that but someone should make that mash up i like that uh, idea. and maybe we'll we'll play around with that a little bit i think there's some difficult ethics around this you know clearly if you're using a deep fake to try to sow confusion or actually deceive mm -hmm. people you can imagine, you know, war propaganda that uses deep fakes showing the, the head of state surrendering or something like that in order to demoralize uh, his yeah. troops. But I think that if, if we are upfront about the fact that we're playing around with this, that we're having fun, uh, that, that we're imagining what would a conversation between uh, a living person and someone who's, who's no longer alive, 
Uh, I think that could be a, a whole just an en interesting entertainment genre. Yeah, and we see actors and celebrities kind of do this already as it is. Like I remember as Christian Bale did Dick Cheney uh, in a movie, and obviously no one's really going to think that's Dick Cheney. However, it's still clear we understand that he is not trying to claim to be Dick Cheney. He is portraying Dick Cheney, and I think that distinction is really helpful when it comes to ethics. Well said. And and likewise, if you're using a, a deep fake, basically like overdub, in order to correct what you said, let's say you mispronounce the guest's name or something, uh, rather yeah. than have the, the person come in and re-record just them saying that name, you could try getting an AI-generated version of that. And I think that would be perfectly ethical. Yep. So we'll do a whole other show on the ethics of AI and deep fakes. And in particular, when we get into the transcription stuff, uh, and we're changing people's words in subtle ways, the ethics around changing the meaning of what they said or the the word choice even. So journalists have a practice of editing quotes to be more concise. And the way I've heard journalists describe it is they're basically just editing you to sound less like an idiot. And most people appreciate being edited to sound less like an idiot. But in some cases, if you're being overly aggressive, you might change the meaning and uh, and that's a whole separate topic. Anything yeah. to add to that? I would definitely like it to not sound like an idiot more often. So I see where they're coming from. We all need all the help we can get, David. We will put some links to the different features. Uh, this voice.ai is a, an exciting one. This could be a game changer. And, and for me, uh, it's not showing up as ready to order yet. I think it comes out on March 25th. But did you say that you got access to voice.ai? Mm -hmm. I'll try and do Barack uh, Obama and filter it through. Let's see if perfect. that works. Great people of America. I'm here to give you a test of the voice AI deepfake. This is actually David, but if you notice, it actually doesn't sound like me anymore. Wow, that's crazy. Let's We're skip ahead to number five. We're yeah, going to talk about the show notes and summaries. So this one is somewhat similar to the transcription feature, except it's using that transcript as the basis for another set of prompts, like what we were doing with Notion, but uh, there are these services, a whole bunch of them have sprung up. And this is where I, I really went on a kind of a binge downloading all these free trials. I'm going to focus on three examples. One of them is called Melville. Great. Melville is the spinny wheel of death. Melville's not quite ready for prime time. If you're behind Melville and you want to clear your name, then send me an email and give me a properly functioning beta account. And I will gladly retract what I've said here. The next one is Capshow. Capshow gives you a Word file that you can download. I'm going to download all assets as a Word document. I've actually already done this and formatted it into Notion so that it'll be a little easier to see. So here it gives us recommended title. It gives us what we might think of as the show notes that you'd see in any podcast directory if you clicked in. Uh, and I just uploaded this little seven to eight minute podcast of myself talking about this uh, floating festival called Ephemerile. And uh, California Dream, exploring the quiet island at Ephemerile. Experience the golden state of mind and recharge your batteries at the quiet island of bare necessities. And if you haven't listened to the podcast, you know, this might not make so much sense, but uh, it actually did a pretty good job. It, it misspelled Ephemerile off by just one letter. Uh, but pretty much, you know, this would save me a little bit of time in thinking about, hey, what's a catchy name? It's really not a bad title. Uh, and even if it's just sort of initial food for thought, I think this is useful, and I can see why they're charging money for this. It's about $8 per episode on most of these platforms. So then we've got some show notes, a little paragraph, uh, bonus points that got my last name correct. Uh, some of the other ones misspelled my last name, did it more phonetically, like D-I-C-E-D -E for diced. Uh, and, you know, it says, in this episode, Charlie highlighted the importance of collective action and voting with one's feet to make decisions about where to live as well as the benefits of living on the quiet island, such as freedom from loud noise, access to the Delta's many offerings, and the opportunity to meet other innovators from Silicon Valley. Charlie also emphasized the importance of the golden state of mind and the potential of the growing network of island archipelagos to make the world a better place. Wow, look at that. That's the, <laughs> the cliche line that wow, wow, uh, wow. Silicon Valley <laughs> deservedly gets lampooned for. I think that maybe I, I referenced making the world a better place ironically in the episode, so... AI still can't distinguish between irony and sincerity. And uh, when it does, who knows, maybe that's the point where it starts to take all of our jobs. This one, Capshow, also gives us uh, an email subject line and an email that I could send, which is more of kind of a short summary. And then it ends with, 
here's where you can listen. And again, you know, this can be improved manually, but if you're not going to be doing show notes otherwise, this is better than nothing. And if you spend five minutes cleaning this up, uh, it, it's not bad. And the nice thing, what I like about this, then it gives us Facebook and Instagram captions. It gives us LinkedIn captions. And I'm curious, what are the differences in the prompts that it gives us uh, for Facebook versus LinkedIn? Well, one difference is it knows that on LinkedIn, we use hashtags. And I guess on TikTok, you probably have to be more concise. So the TikTok examples are a little bit shorter. But otherwise, it's just basically taking the same general ideas and repurposing them for different platforms. Here's a, a Twitter thread. And again, you know, it might just be a template to sort of get you started. It's If my Twitter feed starts getting populated by things that are clearly written by AI, then, uh, then that's no good. But I think we have to be careful with how we use these tools because it will lead to a, you know proliferation of sort of mediocre content if we just let the AI do the heavy lifting, uh, which is why ultimately I'm in favor of taking the transcript and reworking it a little more creatively yourself. But who knows, maybe at some point the AI will reach a point where it does a better job creating a, a whole article out of a transcript than what I can do on my own. My hunch is that it's always going to be the human plus the AI that outcompetes the AI. Yeah, there is some sort of news agency that was putting out articles like web articles for a couple of months using just AI without telling anyone. And not a single person was able to determine that it was AI. And I'm not advocating for that, but I think it is something worth noting in terms of we could very easily find ourselves on the slippery slope of mediocre content. Right. But I'll, t I'll show you something else I was impressed with. Potent quotables. So these are like the, the source material mm -hmm. for social media posts or reels or things like that, where it picked out a handful of quotes. And honestly, I was pretty impressed with what it came up with because I don't remember this exact podcast. I mean, I listened to it, but here's, here's a couple quotes. Rumors of California's demise have been greatly exaggerated. Sunshine, clean water, shelter for everyone who needs it. Little, little aphorisms. Uh, the quality of the ecosystem depends on competitive forces and in particular on the ability of people to choose not only are these fully grammatical formed thoughts without the errors that you'd get from something like Otter or Rev, they actually do summarize the, the primary tidbits. So I'm impressed with this. I think that this is a, it's sort of a must have in the toolkit of a, a podcaster in this day and age. And I'm, I'm frankly thinking about forking over the, the $8 per episode in the future to use it. Okay, I'll briefly share my results from the listener.fm app and you get a different layout. I kind of like this one better, actually, because it gives me the ability to quickly copy and paste the ones that I like. But I got a doc, listener.fm, for uh, misspelling my last name, which is why you should never post AI-generated social media from, uh, from nothing. You got to do some editing. One final set of show notes came from Dub, which uh, also initially I wasn't real impressed with their user interface. It looks like this, very low contrast links, uh, hard to read, but I pasted this stuff over into Notion, and they gave some pretty good title suggestions. Living the California Dream, Seasteading, Sunshine, and Shelter for All. Seasteading, Sunshine, and the California Dream, A Journey to Quiet Island's Bare Necessities. From Seasteading to Sunshine, The Golden State of Mind on Bare Necessities Island. Those are all perfectly good titles. Wouldn't even really need to edit them for them to work. Uh, one other thing I'll point out that I liked about the cap show uh, examples was if I'm posting this on YouTube, for example, uh, it gives me a format and a template here for how uh, a YouTube description kind of ought to be structured, which is a very concise summary, a three point summary after that, and then resources. So a uh, call to action, subscribe. So this is probably a best practice. Uh, and this dovetails with the final topic on our list, which is templatized workflows and automation. And we're not going to get too much into detail on this because this will be the subject of the next podcast featuring Allison Willis, who is the producer of Mind, Body, Health, and Politics. And she's the one that actually goes through the workflow of, of uh, organizing from booking a guest to promoting their content. I think that this final plank, the smart workflows and templates, actually has some of the most potential to stay on top of all of these tools without making it too rigid or committing to any one service. So having a Notion-based calendar where you can customize your templates for the platforms that you're using 
and know which prompts will generate the right kinds of formats for all those things. I think that can kind of make the cap shows and the listener.fms and dubs a little bit redundant, but uh, that will take a little bit more setup on your part using these no code tools. You don't have to be an expert coder to set up some of this stuff yourself. You just have to understand how the AI works. All right, so that wraps up our six ways that AI is changing the podcasting game. So if you enjoyed this content, we hope you will sign up for the email list to get notifications about future episodes, as well as the PDF ebook that's going to condense all of the findings from this podcast series into a simple DIY manual for getting the most out of your podcast using AI tools, all the way up through writing your own book based on your podcast series. That is the creme de la creme of what we're offering, the book in a box package, how to be a thought leader, how to be someone who's considered an expert in your domain based on stuff that you already know, just reformatted into a book, which will position you as the expert on that topic. So if that sounds interesting, be sure to subscribe and stay tuned for next week when we talk with Allison Willis about templatizing your workflow. Thanks for listening. See you next time. Bye-bye.